Hi there, Raul here and I'm back with another stock tips video. In my last stock tips video, I covered the topic of shooting editorial residential real estate images and stock photography. In that video, I mentioned some of the top editorial categories. However, one category that I didn't mention was the product editorial category. The product category is a broad category that includes numerous types of products that you can shoot for stock. You won't find this category anywhere on the stock sites. This is a catch-all phrase that I use to describe images that encapsulate branding. For example, vacuum cleaners are considered a product and I'm certain you can create some really cool stock images, but realistically, how many images of Hoover or Dyson brand vacuum cleaners can you sell? Honestly, I really don't want to photograph vacuum cleaners. So I decided to create a new stock tips video covering the topic of shooting a product that's significantly more interesting. Do you love classic cars as much as I do? I grew up in the 1960s and 1970s and I loved the American muscle car era. And if you go further back in time, there's some beautiful automobile designs from the Art Deco era that influenced future generations of car builders. I spent countless hours in my early teens building model cars of all the classics. I had three shelves in my bedroom with rows of cool looking cars ranging from the Shelby Mustang, the Camaro Z28, I had the Dodge Charger, and the 1963 Corvette split window, one of my favorite cars of all time. I still wish I had those model cars. Since I'm a lover of classic cars, I always enjoyed going to classic car shows. And since I'm a photographer, I love capturing images of those timeless classic cars. I use local car shows as opportunities to capture stock images of these beautiful cars. I will show you some of the images of the cars I've photographed over the years and I'll share with you my techniques that help me produce some top sellers on the stock sites. Although we're still faced with the COVID pandemic, public events are slowly starting to come back around. Car shows are on the cusp of starting up again over the next six months. It's very important to make a distinction between shooting an event such as a car show and shooting the cars in the event. Why is this distinction important? It's important because the style of images you create will attract buyers looking for those specific styles. Therefore, you don't want to be pinned down to just one style of photography. Here's a few images from a local car show in Miami. These are typical event images documenting individuals admiring the cars in the show. These types of editorial images will primarily attract buyers that are documenting current events for local newspapers, magazines, and blogs. These images have a limited buyer audience. You might sell a handful of these images or none at all. In my case, these images have sold about a dozen times. Therefore, you need to look beyond the traditional event editorial style of capturing images if you want to make an impact on your sales. Here's another image from a local car show. This editorial image is a perfect example of capturing branding. It's a simple image of the interior of a vintage 1952 luxury Rolls Royce automobile with the primary subject being the branding on the car keys and the vintage wood dashboard. This simple image has sold over 500 times and has generated nearly $1,000 in income. This image has one of the highest RPDs in my portfolio. So what's the moral of the story here? What you shoot and how you shoot will have a significant impact on your sales. The first set of event style images will attract a smaller audience of buyers. The image of the car keys will attract a larger audience of buyers. Buyers are not only looking for branding. They may also want an image that elicits a sense of nostalgia or luxury or craftsmanship or just an emotional response from the viewer. So if you attend a car show and plan to capture some stock images, remember that traditional event style photography will have a limited buyer audience. Let's review some of my classic car images from local car shows. This image is of a vintage 1951 Jaguar XK120. She's a beauty, although I think I would have preferred the wheel spokes finished in the traditional chrome look. 
Here's a 1955 Buick Special. I love the two-tone red and white paint scheme on this classic. Here's a 1956 Cadillac Series 2 convertible. This car is enormous and looks even better with the top down. And here's a 1947 International Tow Truck. This truck was so cool looking. You don't see many vintage trucks at car shows these days. What do all these images have in common besides the cars being painted red in color? They were all shot with a wide angle prime lens. These images were captured with my Zeiss 21mm Distagon or my Fuji 16mm lens. These are high quality lenses with minimal distortion. If you don't own a prime lens, then use the best wide zoom lens in your camera bag. However, avoid ultra wide angle lenses due to the possibility of distortion when shooting at its widest zoom range. Distortion can be useful if you want to accentuate certain aspects of the composition, but in most cases you want to avoid distortion. When shooting cars at these events, my goal is to capture three unique sets of compositions that will attract buyers looking for different aspects of the automobile. The first composition is a wide angle shot that includes the majority of the car like these images. You'll notice that most of my wide angle shots are taken close to the cars and from a lower angle as well. I do this for two reasons. First, I'm if I'm too far away from the car, I will probably include people in the shot since these events are very popular. Secondly, I don't want to include other cars in the composition if that's possible. I want to produce as clean an image as possible with the car as the primary subject in the composition. I don't want any distracting elements in the composition. The second composition that I strive to capture is what I call the tight wide shot. These are shots that capture a portion of the car and may include some of the branding elements. You are going to position yourself closer to the car when using a wide angle lens. Here's some examples of the tight wide composition. This is a 1941 Studebaker Commander. You don't see too many of these around town. A truly unique design. Here's a shot of the front of the 1955 Buick Special. It's incredible how much chrome was used in these cars. And here's the 1956 Cadillac Series 2 again with the focus on the enormous tail fins. They definitely don't make cars like this anymore. Here's a shot of a vintage 1960s Volkswagen Beetle. My father had a 63 Beetle and I loved that little orange colored bug. And here's a tight shot of a beautiful late model Ferrari supercar. Who doesn't love a Ferrari? All of these images are frequent sellers. They were captured with my Zeiss 21 millimeter and the Fuji 16 millimeter lenses. I also use Fuji's 56 millimeter f1.2 portrait lens for some tight shots, as well as my Tamron 90 millimeter f2.8 macro lens. These two lenses produce excellent images with that dreamy bokeh. The third composition that I like to capture is the close-up shot. These shots focus on the branding or a specific design element of the car. My go-to lens is my Tamron 90mm macro or the Fuji 56mm portrait lens. The macro lens lets me get as close as I want to the car, so it's very flexible in creating different looks. Here are a few examples. Here we have a shot of the wheel center lock of the Jaguar XK120. Here we have the steering wheel of a 1946 Lincoln Continental. Incredible chrome accents on that dashboard. And here's a close-up of the grill of a 1939 Cadillac LaSalle. This is a classic Art Deco design. What a beautiful and unique design. And here's the hood of the 1941 Studebaker Commander. Although it's another front view, the close-up perspective gives a completely different look. Here's a simple shot of the branding of a 1955 Chevy Bel Air. And here's a close-up of the hood and radiator cap of a 1931 Ford Model A. The advantage of using a macro or portrait lens is that you can stand further away or close up if you choose and focus on the unique design elements of the car. Here we have the steering wheel of a 1967 Ford Mustang. There's something special about the look of these vintage interiors. And here's a shot of the grill of the 1952 Rolls Royce. That's one unique looking grill with the elongated chrome and classic Rolls Royce hood ornament. I love this shot of this 1954 Buick Riviera. That front grill is one of the coolest grills you will ever find. It has the look of a hungry shark about to bite down on its prey. Okay, I've shown you a small portion of my classic car images. 
but cars aren't the only classic rides at some shows. You can also photograph classic motorcycles as well. Here's a few shots of vintage motorcycles. This image of this classic 1940s Harley Davidson is a top seller. I believe this is a knucklehead model. She's a beauty. These Yamahas and Hondas are beautiful classics as well. These motorcycle images are also excellent sellers in my portfolio. Depending on the size of the venue, you might have cars and motorcycles spread out over a large area or they might be in groups or rows parked side by side. Regardless how they are situated, use the layout to your advantage. For example, let's say there's a row of cars parked closely side by side which doesn't give you much room to shoot between the cars. Use this to your advantage and capture some group shots. Here's a perfect example with a row of classic VW bugs. This image is also a frequent seller. Here are a few more tips to help you at these car shows. Arrive early. You certainly won't be the only photographer at these events, so get there as early as possible to avoid the big crowds. Go light. Don't be weighed down by a huge backpack with excessive camera gear. I usually pack one camera and two lenses and a small sling backpack. Keep it simple and light. Lately I've been shooting with my Fuji gear which is super super lightweight. Be respectful of the cars you're photographing. My camera never leaves my hand when I'm walking around the cars. I shoot with the wrist strap and the camera is securely in my hand most of the time. If you shoot with a neck or shoulder strap don't lean over and let your camera swing and potentially ding or scratch a car. It happened at one of the shows I attended. The amateur photographer bent over to look through the car window and he dinged the door of a beautiful classic Jaguar. Don't be that photographer. Another tip is to engage with the car owners. These individuals are proud of their cars. That's why they attend these shows. Awards are often given to the different classes of cars and the car owners are happy to be there to show off their expensive restorations. Sometimes the car windows are rolled up and after a pleasant conversation with the owner I will politely ask if they would allow me to photograph the interior. Offer to send the car owners your pics as well. Ask about any other car shows they plan to attend so you'll learn about future shows. And lastly, compliment the owners and thank them. Smaller car shows in most cases will give you the greatest potential to get the best shots. They usually have fewer restrictions and they generally have smaller crowds as well. The larger car shows will have the most valuable and beautiful cars but they tend to have the most restrictions. Some of the most valuable cars could also be roped off so close access will be limited. Another tip is that you're not limited to just car shows. I've photographed classic cars in parking lots, side streets and just about anywhere I see them parked. So if you have your camera with you, strike when the iron is hot and just take some shots. One last note is that some agencies may not accept certain brands in certain compositions. For example, iStock Photo will generally not accept images of brands when submitted as a cropped close-up shot. Adobe Stock and Shutterstock and the smaller agencies on the other hand will readily accept these submittals regardless of the composition. Once COVID restrictions are relaxed in your community and car shows are permitted, then here's your opportunity to expand and enhance your stock portfolio with some unique images. If you love classic cars, then you'll enjoy these events and you can earn some extra income at the same time. Okay, this wraps up my video. Thanks for viewing and if you liked it, please hit that thumbs up. I have other videos on stock photography, so check them out for more valuable tips. And please hit that subscribe button if you find value in my videos. Thanks and enjoy the classic car ride. Oh, and here are a few more shots of classic cars I've photographed over the years. Catch you later.